Hey YouTube, how you guys doing tonight? Kevin here coming at you with another video. So grab your uh, 10 millimeter wrenches and your repair manuals and open up to the carburetor page. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to be talking a little bit about aftermarket carburetors. I just bought this carburetor tonight and I wanted to show it to you guys. It is an aftermarket eBay carburetor. I paid 23 bucks for it. But before I get into all this, please take a moment, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so when I post a video, you guys get it. You guys don't miss a video. And I also notice there's a lot of people who are watching the videos but haven't made this, the uh, commitment to uh, hit the subscribe button. If you don't mind please doing that, that really helps us grow and uh, share the channel as much as possible. And please don't forget the thumbs up. They really help. Alright, so let's get into this. We got... A bunch of carburetors as you can see right in front of you you know we got four of them these are all aftermarket carburetors except for this one which is a factory one i want to show you guys some of the differences between the aftermarket and the factory okay and um this carburetor right here on ebay is about 23 bucks and it says it fits a ke100 a km100 a kd80 all those and uh well i want to talk to you guys about that so Let's get into it, okay? There's going to be a lot of information here. And please understand that just because it's different doesn't mean it won't work, okay? So keep that in mind. And there are some pros and cons to having one of these Chinese knockoff carburetors. But there's also some downfalls to it, too. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. All right. So we're going to talk about the Chinese knockoff carburetor. First, you can see this big piece right here on here. And a lot of people are like, Kevin, what the heck is that thing for? This is for those stupid cone filters I hate. These stupid things. This one doesn't fit it. It's too small. But for the bigger cone filters, this fits on here. Now, yes, that looks cool. I'm not going to lie. It does. It looks cool. But these are junk. Okay? Don't, don't use these. They suck in water. They're not good. Use the factory air box. Okay? Trust me. You want to. All right? Now... That's what this is for. You can actually pop this off with a screwdriver. I just leave them on. There's no harm in it. All right. We're going to take a look at the functions and what the pros and cons are to this. So we have the choke rod with the new knob. It works perfectly fine. That's in the right place. Here's where your throttle is. It came with a nice little brand new rubber boot. And then this one right here is your um, throttle, um, your speed screw for your um, idle adjustment. Okay. I like this better than the factory one because this is all brass all the way down. The other one is short and takes a plastic cap, which never really works too well. Okay, so kudos on the uh, the brass rod. And it's got this little um, piece here to hold it onto it. So this actually can come off that. All right, moving forward. So in the back, we flip it over. We have the, this black thing right here is called an insulator. And this is the clamping device. So over here I have my intake for a rotary valve Kawasaki. And it fits on there nice and tight, which is awesome. Okay, so that's good. Now we're going to turn it on to the side. This one has the adjustment in the front. It doesn't really matter if it's on the front or on the side. This one happens to be in the front, which is fine. All right, we're going to flip it over on the side, and now we have three ports. Now, on our Kawasaki KE100s, we only have the one. Well, the one is for the fuel, as is this one right here, okay? This one is a vent. This gets vented to the atmosphere. You don't need to cap it. You don't need to do nothing with it. Just leave it alone. Some carburetors even come with a down tube, and they put that on there. And it's just like that, and, you know, it then back down bottom. It doesn't matter, honestly. This is, you don't need it. Okay, that one can be left alone. This third one has to be plugged. You have to put a vacuum cap on this little black one. A vacuum cap is a little cap, little rubber cap that slides over it. Why? Here is why. Because this one right here will suck air. And it goes through, and I'm going to see if I can show it to you guys real quick. But if you look right up in here, let me see here. Right there, see that, that hole? I don't know if you can see that or not. Right there, yeah, you can see the hole. Okay, 
So that hole is connected to here and it will suck air and cause it to overspeed, a lean condition. Um, it won't calm down when you rev up. It will just keep racing and racing and racing. So you definitely need to plug with a vacuum cap this outer piece right here. Okay. It's a must. You have to do it. Um, what is that for? Well, I'll tell you what that's for. Certain bikes that this carburetor would also fit. Because this doesn't just fit the Kawasaki's. It fits some Suzuki's. It fits some Yamaha's. So what that is, that's where your oil line would hook up to for your oil injection. So it would come off your oil pump. The line would come up and plug into here. And then the oil mix would come through with your fuel and air mix. Okay? And that's how the automatic mixer would happen. On the Kawasaki's, it's done through this port right here. And it goes through an injector nozzle right here. That brass tube. And you might notice the angle of the brass tube. It faces out this way. See how it's facing? What that does is as the rotary valve comes around. That right there lubricates the rotary valve. Because the rotary valve has to ride on a cushion of oil. If you pre-mix these. The oil injection is not spraying it. It's just coming through this way. Through the opening. And then the rotary valve is not going to get the adequate fuel, I mean, the adequate oil that it needs, the lubrication. This intake right here is my little one from my KV75 MT1. And the oil is injected through here and comes right into the intake. Sprays into the intake the same exact way that this port right here would do. This will not fit the, KM, the uh, KV75 or the MT1. All right, so there we have that part down. So, so far, so good. Really, the only danger using this carburetor is that black port right there. We got to plug that. Okay, now we're going to take the carburetor bowl off. I had already removed three of the screws. Now we're going to remove the fourth one so we can take a peeky and take a look inside and see what's going on. Okay. So in here... We have our plastic floats, which are nice. Um, there is some shininess on them because there is some aluminum flakes. So whenever you get a new carburetor, you want to take it apart and spray it down with carburetor cleaner and get all the machine um, debris left over from it. There is a lot of debris in these carburetors. You can feel it. It's gritty. And it's inside there. You can actually kind of see some of the shininess on my finger. Okay. So you want to definitely spray these out. You don't want to just take them out of the package and bolt them on the motor and think you're getting a good deal. Um, it doesn't work that way, unfortunately. So a couple things. The carburetor float adjustment on these is not the same as your Makunis. So if you get a bike and you're trying to go and adjust it and you look in your manual, oh, okay, it gets adjusted this way. It is not the same as the Makuni. These right here are basically straight. See this line on the float? It's like a, hold on, let me see if I can do it this way. There's like a, a plastic seam line. You basically want to make sure it's parallel with the base. So it's right here. Okay. And you want to make sure it's parallel with the base. That's all. Um, that's basically the way they design them and the way they build them. So there's no specialty. Um, adjustment like you like you'd find on a ke 100 just because it's for the bike doesn't make it the same okay it is not the same the other problem with this carburetor is you don't know what these jets are they are not marked on there at all you see there is no marking on those jets so you have no idea what that jet is okay which is fine well i'll show you how to t tell all right, so I'm going to put this back on so I don't hurt anything inside here. Slip the carburetor bolt back on. I'm just going to throw it on one screw. Because i got to take it back apart again. Oops, sorry about that. Keep bumping in here. One of the cool things about this carburetor is its drain. It comes with a tube on there, a little red tube. This, comes, this is how it comes on in the box. Or the package okay comes like that and then this way is supposed to run out to the ground and then when you need to drain your carburetor bowl you loosen up this screw and the fuel flows out the carburetor bowl that is nice but there's a little problem with that 
you can't use that rubber insulator. This on the bottom of your carburetor is like one of our KEs. It just won't work. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to plug this. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a uh, an electric hot glue gun, one of these, and you're going to fill it up. Okay. And then you're applying it up, tipping it over, and pushing it in that way. See if it'll fit that way. Okay. Because you want to plug it, you don't want to leave this open because this way here can cause air to seep in, water, and then you'll end up with a lean condition. Okay? So we don't want that. We're trying to avoid a lean condition. All right. So And this way here, if you don't plug that, that'll be a lean condition as well. All right. So we're going there. Now, what are some of the pros to this thing? Well, the, one of the pros is we have a screw here to drain the carburetor bowl, which is really nice. When you go to put these bikes away for the season, unfortunately on my bikes, I have to pull all the bowls down except for uh, the KE-102, which has a modified bowl. Okay, now let's take a look at the, uh, the throttle. Well, screw that, slide this out. And right off the bat, I noticed that the taper of this needle is a lot thinner at the bottom than ours. It's really tapered. I mean, it, it comes, it's more drastic than the, um, the KE-100. This is good. This is a nice performance needle. Um, the thinner the needle down bottom to the fatter, that's going to give you a better, a better, um, what do you call it, the flow of fuel. If you can use a thinner needle, that's the way to go. All right. So, let's take a look at the, this is one. Sorry about that. This is one from a KE100, and they are the same diameter, okay, which is awesome. So we're not losing any um, area, if you will. Now we're going to take the carburetor. This is the Makuni carburetor. It comes factory on the bikes, and I'm going to use my finger. I'm going to show you this, okay. That's as far as my finger can go in there, all right, and it gets stuck. So right up to my knuckle, right there. Now, that's tight, okay? That's it. This one, right here, watch this, we're gonna watch over here. See how far I can go? I can bury my, my finger almost all the way in there, okay? What does that mean? That means that this right here, this carburetor is gonna flow more CFM. It's gonna th flow more air through it, all right? Which is awesome. That's what we want. We want to use maximum air. Also, the Venturi side of this, which is right here. You can see how nice that wall is, how smooth it is, how contoured it is all the way around. So more air is going to funnel into the Venturi, the Venturi and pick up the fuel from the office down below, from the main jet. With the um, nice needle... The thin needle is going to give a better acceleration and a, uh, a better top end, okay? When this hole right here is wider, it's using more of the slide. So as opposed to using this section right here of the slide, it's using more of the slide. And that's right there is what you want. You want to have more air flowing through. Now... To accommodate that air flowing through, you need to have a good sized jet. More air flowing through gives you more power. But we don't know what this main jet is. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to find a way to measure the size of the jet. Because it is not marked at all. There's no paperwork. In fact, here's the bag that came in it. There's nothing in the box other than this bag. All right. How do we know how big the jet is? How can we identify it? I'm going to show you guys how I do it. There are different ways of doing it, but I'm going to show you how I do it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to show you guys how I do it, which I've already, I just did this off camera because it was going to take too long. So I wanted to show you. 
So I have a set of drill bits here. Now these are not regular drill bits, okay? These are not regular drill bits. These are wire gauge drill bits. And you can see how they're numbered, okay? They're numbered just like that for wire gauges. And they, their smallest gauge is 60. So they're backwards. So the, the bigger the number, the smaller the, num uh, smaller the uh, wire size, the bigger the number, the, um, I mean, yeah, you know what I mean. So the smaller the number, the thicker it is, okay? It's backwards, okay? Now, with that said, we don't know what jet size came in this. So you can see that I got a drill bit. I got the back end of it sticking out, and I put this in. This is a 60, and it's kind of loose, okay? So I can go up and go to a 59 drill bit. That is not the size of the jet, by the way. That is just the wire size coming through on this. Let me get my little... So this is 59, okay, this this wire gauge right here. So I'm going to take the, drill, the um, this bit, and I'm going to stick this in here. Okay, and it fits in this snug. So it is the 60. It does it does fit in there. So it's like a, like a, if there was a 60, a 59.5, that would be the right size, okay? The 60 fits in there. Now what we're going to do... Let me go that 60 real quick. Here's the 60. And that fits all the way through. Okay, so we're good there. Now we know what size it is. And so now we're going to take a Makuni jet. This is actually off of a different bike, but I'm using it as an example. This is actually bigger than what we use in our bikes. This is a 95, okay? And here's the 60 that came for that um, aftermarket Chinese carburetor. And look, it don't even fit in there. So it turns out that this aftermarket one has a really big jet. It's actually bigger than an 80. So the bike calls for 80. Let's think about this. The bike calls for an 80 at best. So normally it's 77 and a half to 80. This one definitely has bigger than a 95. So it's probably like a 100 jet. Okay. In this thing. Now, what I do is I like to compare the drill bits to the size, and will this carburetor get adequate fuel? Yes. It will definitely get enough fuel with that large diameter jet. Okay. Visually looking at it with my, with my, mag, my magnifying glass and comparing it with the aftermarket, um, with the Makuni, they are very close, okay? But I can tell you, the drill bits don't lie. I couldn't put the 60 through here. So this 95 is definitely smaller than this one right here. So this has got to be like a 98 or a 100 jet, which I'm perfectly fine with. Okay, so we know that the jet is fine, that the jet is adequate enough, and we have sufficient airflow through. We have a better needle. So we got some, uh, we actually have a pretty decent carburetor right here. This thing's going to add some performance to this bike. I do have to clean it. I have not cleaned it yet. But I wanted to show it off to you guys. I wanted to show you guys what I got. And the pros and the cons to running this carburetor on a bike. It is not a bad carburetor at all. Will it work? Absolutely. What's the major thing that we have to do to it? We have to clean it first. And we have to cap that little black piece right there. And other than that, this carburetor right here is going to be just fine on the bike. We just want to make sure that we have adequate fuel flow to it. Because with a big jet and a small bowl, that's kind of one of the, the downfalls to it. The One of the cons is the smaller bowl. But, um, yeah, this is going to be quite nicely, quite nice on this bike. So this is the bike motor, uh, carburetor we're going to use for testing. We're going to try this thing out. We're going to put it through its paces and see what it can do. And then I actually have an engine for this to go on. That's actually going to, I hate to say it, it's going to use one of those cone filters I absolutely hate. 
but it's not going to be used for that application so I'll show you all right so there's the carburetor we have the same diameter slide but we have a bigger opening here okay so that's a bonus that's one positive it comes with a big jet in it that's another bonus the clamp is very adequate it has a seal on the inside and a good insulator on the back side um, and all the cables and everything are in the same spot and it has a more narrower um, fuel metering rod so this this carburetor guys it's got some pretty good stuff I want to show you guys another style um, metering rod right here and you can see this one you can see how thin this one goes this one goes really thin this is for a Yamaha Banshee two-stroke okay this is a performance a performance needle um, and this one right here is pretty close to that performance needle I mean they are close so this one is for a, a Yamaha Banshee okay and this one right here is for a KE100 so this thing's gonna go this thing's gonna have some speed to it guys it's gonna definitely add some airflow to it which is what we want and it's gonna add some power I think we're gonna have to do some modifications but I don't think it's gonna be bad so we're gonna test this carburetor and see what it can do well I wanted to show you guys that don't be intimidated there's all kinds of carburetors out there this is another style right here where it comes off the front clamp style in the back but it has a style choke here's the key if you do come across something like this you can literally pull this choke out with a 12 millimeter wrench this setup will come off and then you can just add your old setup to it it'll work right onto it no problem if you end up with the style carburetor okay the vent is right here see this, this brass tube you don't have to block it or anything like that but there's a hole see the hole right there that's where it vents out of okay same thing it's got the adjustment on the side this is your idle speed screw because it's not up top so you're gonna have to you know deal with that part of it this is different same style uh we call it their floats and, and jets i don't know what size jet this is but i mean it's got basically the same thing you know these carburetors are all pretty close you just have to take your time and look and see what you're getting um sorry about that I had to put my little guy to bed so basically what i'm saying is when you're buying a carburetor that says it's for your application take a really close look at it and always compare it to factory if you can get a factory carburetor obviously this is going to be oem it's going to be the best okay but for a good alternative that has the potential doesn't mean it's going to just because it has some good features to it doesn't mean it's going to give you more power okay it has the ability to give you more power so we're going to try that out and see how this thing does and how it performs and uh yeah i'm quite happy with it we're going to put like i said we're going to put a vacuum plug on that and uh get that plugged up and then once that's plugged up right there then we'll be able to use this carburetor on a ke100 um or km or kd you can put these if you want to put that down tube on there you absolutely could some people like the look of it it really doesn't really matter but um one of the things i find with the down tube is it stops dirt from going directly into it so um these do help a little bit this tube right here will not be used we don't need that and we got to plug up this one here which is the most important thing all right so we got a little vacuum cap here pop that right on there like so yeah now that's blocked off and this will work just fine like i said that's for an automatic oiler um oil injection units um not to be modified with yours but that right there would work with the uh, some of the suzuki and the yamahas so that's good right there that's all set this carburetor here is good i gotta throw the screws on clean it and uh i can go ahead and put this into the into the bike into the motor and having a nice um nice rod there which is cool and i'm just going to spray this whole thing down take the bowl back off clean it all up with carburetor cleaner 
and this will work just just fine on that bike onto that motor and there we go brand new carburetor all set just gotta like i said we'll wash it out and it's got some it'll have some performance gains to it which is nice it has it features the drain a bigger throttle opening so it can flow more air big jet this is going to go pretty darn good i think but once again whenever you buy a carburetor you don't know what the jet is inside of it so i got lucky on this one this was a big jet um but i have a few that have a really small jet and this came on a carburetor like this where it should have had a big jet in it and it actually had a very small jet so once again you don't know what they come with because they're not listed it's not in the paperwork it's not online there is no information on this carburetor so if you have a chance to get one of these this um particular drill bit set which is hard to open but does open this particular drill bit set is called a wire gauge drill bit set and the numbers are backwards so the smaller the number the bigger it is the bigger the number the smaller it is and um, this is what I use to you know basically right in here is all you're gonna use to see what you got for a jet size um, if it's an 80 this won't even work but I got this a Harbor Freight I don't even drill with these. These are just for measurements. Okay, that's all I use those for is measuring. Because it's it's they're stepped up one number after the other. It's the most accurate way to do that. So um yeah, so that's how I do that. So if you're gonna get one of these carburetors, go ahead and get one. Um I, I would recommend it. We're gonna see what it does for performance and you'll be able to see for yourself. And just remember to block oops sorry. Just remember to block off that nipple. You don't need to use one of these, but if you do, it will help with the dirt. And um, that's pretty much it. This um, housing right here does come off. You can just pry it off at the bottom with a screwdriver. Just work it back and forth a little bit, and you'll be able to pry this off. This right here is literally just a cone filter mount. And on one of the engines that I'm putting this carburetor on, we're actually going to use that. Uh, remember that engine I cut in half? Yep, after we get done doing the KE100 build I'm doing now, we're going to be use, we're going to use this carburetor on that particular engine and see what we get out of it. And when we do that, we're actually going to change from this style choke to this style choke so I can show you guys that it will work. And other than that, that's it for that. So I want to say thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you guys have any comments or any questions, by all means, put them down below. Um, and hopefully this helps you out on your decision to buy an aftermarket carburetor. Just because it doesn't look the same doesn't mean it won't work. But you got to make sure you know what you're looking for. This says it would work on a KE100. It absolutely will on eBay. However, you have to know about this. This is this right here. Without this, you, you can literally ruin your engine. Okay? Some of the things about a lean condition. A lean condition will cause your engine to overheat. It will cause excessive white smoke. Not, not blue smoke like you would have with uh, two-stroke smoke. But excessive white smoke. The RPMs will go up, but they won't come back down. Or they'll come down very slow. Um, a lean condition will also cause hesitation and bog. So you go to throttle it, it'll... Uh, uh, you know, it won't go. Um, those are different symptoms that... A lean condition can do a big jet is going to give you a rich condition which rich is really what you're looking for you want the fuel the more fuel goes in the cool the engine will run I rather have a rich engine than a uh, what you call a lean one so and this also has a good quality seal I'm very happy with this it's got an o-ring style in here it's like a um, it's stepped and then this is the insulator ring right here that part's cheap, but it does work. And never keep, um, when you're doing these insulator rings, see how that's lined up with the crack? You know, this, this cracker here? Never do that. You always want to offset this. Okay? Because you don't want to suck air there. So offset it.
put it down bottom put it off to the side it really don't matter it will clamp down either way but do not line up your insulator this is not good practice to line that up like that okay always offset it all right guys well i hope that right there helps you with the aftermarket carburetors once again thank you for watching thank you for subscribing and if you guys have any questions on this by all means please ask i will talk to you guys later i'm out